with one woman. Can you say with me, one woman? One, one woman. woman. Miss Salomon, one woman. woman do? The woman pastor. But because of her intervention with a man behind her pushing her, right Pastor Charlie? Yes. Right Rabbi Baruch? Right. Was pushing her to do what's right. And as, this, is, this is now a special word for the husband. Make sure that you push your women to do what's right. And you know what's right? What's right is that they fulfill the call that Yahweh has given them from the beginning of time. And inside of women, just like inside of men, are divine callings and visions. And it's time for all of the callings and the visions are like babies of the Creator. Every calling and every vision is like a baby of the Creator. Amen? It's time for all of them to be born and nothing to be lacking and nothing to be missing. Hallelujah. So take example of our husband sitting right here, this Mordecai, yeah. this Esther's, hallelujah, to show up and do what is right. So put in the feast of an overturning of a situation of death. And believe me, we get Haman Amalek, the son of Agagai, who is actually a descendant of Amalek that hated the Jewish people all the way from the beginning in the desert according to Exodus 17 and Deuteronomy 25, that very man that sought to destroy Israel ended up in the galleries. And you know what? The same Amalek has sought to destroy Papua New Guinea. And the same Amalek has sought to destroy all of the nations of the world because of violating principles and commandments in the world through a very Amalekite theology called replacement theology. That is an Amalekite theology. Can you say with me, Amalekite? Amalekite. Theology. theology. Replacement theology. Replacement that theology. replaced Israel, that replaced the Holy Festival, that replaced the Shabbat, that replaced the name of Yeshua, that replaced the gospel made in Zion from a gospel made in Rome and Babylon. That Amalekite theology has been here for the annihilation of the nations. You see, Papua New Guinea is 97% Christian. Do you know what that means? That if there is a national repentance of breaking Yah's commandment and of replacement theology, this nation is going to become the first sheep nation ever in the world. That's what it means. And I believe that right now we are reckoning with something. And it's important that we reckon with something. Are we willing to pay the price so that this nation will become the first sheep nation in the world? And if we are willing to, obviously we are willing because we are right here with you, right? That's why we came. I mean, it's much easier for us not to come. But we are here because we firmly believe that this nation has all of the potential to become the first ship nation. Hallelujah. Because if 97% of this nation repents from replacement theology and repents from violating Yad's commandments, Hallelujah, and turns back to Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, the liar from the tribe of Judah, and to the love of Israel, and to the blessing of Israel. This nation will put the key of Abraham, which is Genesis 12, 3, at the gate of the nation, and will open wide the gate for the biggest awakening and revival, not only here, beloved ones, but get ready, because you will impact the whole Pacific. Not only here. And I'm going to tell you that it's not going to be only the whole Pacific. It is actually going to be the whole world. Because people will begin to hear for the first time about this nation at the ends of the earth that most people never even gave a thought to. When sometimes I would say, I'm going to PNG, people would look at me and say, PN what? <laughs> you don't know what PNG is? It's says Papua New Guinea. Never heard about Papua New Guinea. Okay, but you will begin to hear from now. You will begin to hear from now because the gospel made in Zion that has come to Papua New Guinea will now come out of Papua New Guinea and will impact the nations of the earth. I hope you're getting excited. I'm talking about big things. I'm not going to take too much time. I know that you've been waiting here for many, many hours and we've been traveling for nearly three days. 
And I'm not going to preach all the messages we brought in one day, right? No, I am able, but I will not. Rabbi is laughing because he knows it's true. And it's, uh, the scripture is in Psalm 65. I'm going to use this wonderful technology called a cell phone to help myself to be able to get there. And I'm going to read three scriptures from this particular... Son, the God made flesh that was born in Bethlehem, in Judah, and he was crucified in Jerusalem, rose from the dead on the third day, and he's alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. He's called the liar from the tribe of Judah because he's still a Jewish lion. Revelation 5, verse 5, it says... Yeshua, Yeshua to everything in your life. Because the moment you're proclaiming his name, everything must bow down. Everything must bow down. Hallelujah. Amen? Last but not least, I want to say thank you to the precious committee of reception of the army of Papua New Guinea and of the police and of the prisons. I want to tell you that you are very honorable people. Shabbat for our children and for our spiritual children will stay with the first part of the verse. I will bless those who bless Israel. And Rabbi is a descendant of the high priest Aaron. By blood, not only spiritual, but he comes from a family of the priestly family, the Kohen family, and he will really honoring us. I honor you today. And all of you people as well, Genesis 12, 3, we're going to release already the Aaronic blessing, the blessing that Aaron the high priest gave to all of the children of Israel. We do it every Shabbat for our children and for our spiritual children worldwide.